Hi, yogis. Welcome. Namaste. Jameson here, excited to share the practice of yoga with you. <clears throat> and I would like us to begin seated. And if you remember, we have options for how to sit. I am going to choose to sit on a pillow and a blanket today because it'll get my hips off the ground and I can sit easily. We will be seated for five, maybe 10 minutes while I share some information. If si sitting on the ground is uh, not very comfortable, you have your chair that you can always sit down. But please don't go here first. Use the chair as a, okay, sitting on the ground is not accessible. But if this is accessible, then da 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 da, -da here we are. You can cross your legs either way. And it also helps to tilt your pelvis forward. When you tilt your pelvis forward, you get out of the round, do, 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 into a more upright posture. And just your legs, <clears throat> so it feels good. And ta-da, here we are, seated on our cushion. One of my favorite places, actually. It's, it's up there, uh, along with waterfalls and mountaintops and all the beautiful places that the earth has to offer. I love to be seated on my cushion. Perfect. Okay, you made it. Today, let's talk about intention. It's basically purpose. It's asking the question, why? Why are you here? Why are you practicing yoga with me today? Why are you enrolled in this course? Why are you doing what you do? What is your perf purpose of life and existing on this earth? Okay, whoa, we just went there. The big existential, why am I on this earth, which is a great question I love to ponder. But that's the macrocosm. We can bring it into the microcosm of why am I here today on this yoga mat? What is the intention? I like to think that yoga is more than just stretching. I have lots of definitions for it. I'm sure there's one in the dictionary. Um, but I believe that yoga is stretching with breath, stretching with mindful breathing. It's one of my definitions. And when we add mindful breathing in, it helps us to become aware. And that awareness brings us into the present moment. And that presence is how we let go of any unnecessary baggage or weight that we don't want to carry. And there's an intention behind that. So <clears throat> today's intention is to think about intention, to recognize the why. Why am I here? Today's theme of intention is to get you thinking about why am I here on this yoga mat today? It might be first thing in the morning, it might be your lunch break. It might be in the evening. You may have just put the kids to bed. There's so many different circumstances um, for you to be able to get here. But you got here in the middle of your day, no matter what else you have going on. We all have so much going on all the time, every single day. So let me say congratulations. I'm very proud of you for being here. Now we can think about why are we here? What is the intention? So another example, I like to run. And when I go run, I think about what is this run for? Why am I running today? And I don't run every day. I don't just wake up and run to go run. I wake up and run with a purpose. Some days I think I just need to get a nice easy run in to get the body moving. Okay, some days I think today I want to go into the mountains and run really far. I want to go run 20 miles and push my limits. Some days I think, okay, I want to run for an hour because that will give me a nice workout and then I can come home and practice yoga and maybe do some strength training and work on full body fitness. But every run I go on, I'm thinking, why am I doing this run? And that kind of direction really helps. It helps me grow as a runner. And if we can bring that to our yoga mat, 
if we come to the yoga mat and we have an idea of why am I practicing yoga? Why am I here? What is the intention? Then instead of just doing this thing, it provides meaning and value. And then all of a sudden, we can grow as yogis. And that directly translates to helping us grow as people. Okay, your legs might be like, oh my gosh, I've been sitting cross-legged for longer than ever. Let's go ahead and sit back, walk your feet out, cross your legs the other way. You probably went the comfortable way first, and this way is like suddenly so foreign. Oh my gosh, whose legs are these? I promise they're still yours. You're just crossing them different than you usually go to. And it's okay. I cross my legs both ways for a long time. And this way still just, it feels awkward. It, it just does. It's not, it's like right-handed, left-handed. If you're right-handed, you can throw a ball with your right hand. Even if you threw a ball with your left hand for the next 10 years, I think you'd still just have that ease with your right hand. So same thing here. Let's sit and take three breaths. This is my favorite way to transition from whatever it was that we were doing into the yoga practice into this safe space that we create, that you and I are co-creating right now. I as your guide, you as the practitioner, we are co-creating this yoga practice. I am not doing this. You and I together are co-creating a space for the yoga practice to happen. You have a very, very active role in what's happening. And I love that. I love that. Okay, so <clears throat> we're seated. Sit nice and tall. I like to place my left hand and my right hand and set them down in my lap. You might want to place your hands on your knees. Here's another little yogi technique. If you do sit down, but you find yourself rounded, you can scoot back against the wall and use the wall as a prop. <clears throat> and actually... Lean back into the wall. This will be a great technique for when we sit and meditate for long periods of time, or this could just help you right now. Lots of options. Again, chair, different levels of seats, sitting in the middle of the room, sitting with your back here, or anything else that you can think of. And so this is how I hope to offer yoga to you in a way that even though I cannot see you right now, whatever your unique qualities, your unique physical qualities are, I hope that there's an option for you. And we can come together and we can find an option. Remember, yoga is for everybody, and that means you too. Okay, let's find a seat, please. Hands in your lap or hands on your knees, that's good too. Sometimes we like to create hand signals. They're called uh, mudras. You can take your finger to your thumb and the three fingers out. This is Jnana Mudra. It's for knowledge and understanding and intention. Cool. So whatever feels best. <clears throat> Go ahead and close your eyes or soft focus. Keep your eyes open on a spot. That's also great. Let's first take a clearing breath. So in and out through your mouth. Inhale. And exhale, let it go. <sighs> Nasal breathing, if you have it. Close your lips. Relax your teeth and your tongue in your mouth. Breathe in through your nose. Exhale, let it go. Breathe in through your nose. Exhale, let it go. Breathe in through your nose. And exhale, let it go. Blink your eyes open. Let's bring our hands together. Namaste. Okay, that's great. I love what just sitting still and a few breaths can do to just change our mindset and change how we feel. Perfect. Let's make our way onto hands and knees. We can scoot our props to the side. <clears throat> we
we don't need them just yet. Maybe if we have a block or a prop handy, that's good. Perfect. Tabletop position. These are alignment cues. Shoulders over hands, hips over knees, fingers spread wide, toes untucked. Now we have aligned our tabletop position. This movement is a great movement. It's called cat and cow. It starts to bring fluid and movement and lubrication into our spinal discs, and it can really help um, counteract the effects of sitting all day, and it's a great warm-up for our spine. The first movement is shoulders away from ears, belly drops down, hips go up. You're thinking about an arch in your back. The next movement goes the other way, Puff up through your shoulders, round your back, chin into chest. Move back through, belly down, shoulders away from ears. Arch your back. This is called cow pose. Why? I don't know, but it must resemble a cow in some way. And then round through your back, push into your hands. And this one definitely looks like a cat when a cat stretches after its nice long nap it's like wow all right heart moves through cow pose round your back cat pose neutral tabletop position go ahead sit your heels back i want to give you another option <clears throat> you may be like wow that hurt my knees not cool jmo what is this yoga torture that you're making me do? It's okay. I can understand some things are not very comfortable, especially <clears throat> if we don't spend much time um, practicing yoga and getting our knees comfortable with this. So we can pat it with a pillow or a blanket. And this goes for any time your knees are down on the ground. So you might want to go grab your pillow or blanket. A little bit of padding can go a very, very long way. Now let's come back to tabletop position. Here's the alignment cues. <clears throat> Shoulders over wrists, hips over knees, fingers spread nice and wide, plant down through your hands. Excellent. Let's move with breath. Here in tabletop, breath in, breath out. Inhale, belly down, cow pose, shoulders away from ears. Exhale, cat pose, round through your spine. Inhale, cow pose. Exhale, cat pose. Inhale, cow pose. Exhale, cat pose. Back and forth, a few more just like this. Find your rhythm. Inhale, open up, cow pose. Exhale, round in, cat pose. Inhale, and exhale. Last one, inhale, and exhale. Very nice. Let's walk our hands back. Make your way all the way up to standing. <clears throat> Perfect. Okay, so what was that? That was movement with breath, stretching with breath. That was yoga. We're practicing yoga right now. Great. I love it. Already, you're doing amazing. So good. A great start. We have the whole world ahead of us, and it's awesome. Perfect. Okay, let's find what pose am I in? <clears throat> Ta-da! Tadasana, mountain pose. Feet are hip width, hands by sides, stand up nice and tall. Really good. Okay, from here, hands sweep out and up, and then right back to your heart center. Let your hands go down, out, reach wide, and up, and then bring it in to your heart center. So good. Let's inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, hands up. 
Exhale, hands to center. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands to heart center. And hands down. Let's bridge your toes, root down, feet. Let's close our eyes. Deep breath in. Or soft focus on a point. Let that breath go. Deep breath in. Let that breath go. Deep breath in. And let it go. Really nice. Go ahead and blink your eyes open. <clears throat> Please grab your chair or your block and set it at the front of your mat. So I'll have these both here for all of the options. Okay, great. <clears throat> Tadasana, feet face forward, hands by sides, you're all set up, ready to go? Perfect. Inhale, hands go up. Now, place a bend in your knees, this supports our low back. Take your arms wide, lean forward to your chair or your block. Very nice. Now, whatever you have, go ahead and bend your elbows round your back, let your head drop down, and vision goes through your legs, so you're looking through. Now, press into your prop, the chair, or the block, come up and halfway lift, so heart lifts, and then bend your knees again, fold over your body, root down through your feet, keep the bend in your knees, and come all the way up with your hands. Hands down to heart center and by your sides. Okay. Let's try this a few times in case you're like, what? Huh? Okay. Let's try it again. Hands go up. Sweep arms wide. Little bend in knees. Sweep the arms wide again as you forward fold. Hands to your block or your chair. Look through your legs. Press your arms straight. You can go into straight legs now, so it's flat back, straight legs, bend knees, forward fold. Come all the way up, keep the bend in the knees, sweep your arms up, hands to heart center, hands down. Good job. Love it. You're doing awesome. Let's try this again with our breath. Inhale, hands sweep up. Exhale, bend knees forward fold. Inhale, flat back, straight legs. Exhale, bend knees, forward fold. Inhale, come all the way back up, hands up to the sky. Exhale, hands to heart center, and hands down. This is called a half salute, a half sun salutation. One more time. Inhale, hands up. Little bend to knees. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, bend knees. Forward fold. Look through your legs. Inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, hands heart center. And down. Let's do it again. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, bend knees, forward fold. Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Ardha Uttanasana, Ardha means half. Exhale, forward fold. Keep a bend in your knees, head drops down. Inhale, hands up and overhead. Urdhva Hastasana, reach high. And then exhale, hands to heart center and down. Tadasana. Great movement. Let's close our eyes, soft focus if that feels better. Deep breath in. Exhale, let it go. Breath in. And exhale, let it go. Deep breath in. 
and let it go. Very nice. Okay, now let's work on a yoga transition that gets us from standing up on our feet into the tabletop position that we were just in. Sound good? Let's move together, please. Hands go up, inhale breath, and you can thread the breath if it's feeling good. Little bend to knees, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lifts. Exhale, we're gonna bend our knees so much that our fingertips go down and then step back into tabletop. If we have props, you scoot them aside. Perfect, very nice. Tabletop position, inhale, cow pose. Exhale, cat pose. Inhale, cow pose. Exhale, cat pose. Neutral tabletop. Let's maybe grab our block or bring our prop back. And we can use this to step, step, halfway lift, inhale, exhale, bend knees, forward fold. Inhale, come all the way up. And exhale, hands to heart center and hands down. Okay, great. If this is like, whoa, you're moving too fast, or I don't quite understand. That's okay. That's why there's repetition, and we will see these over and over again through the course. So don't feel bad if you're not getting something. We can flip that, and we can say the intention of today is to be here and be in intention. It is not to do exactly what I'm doing. It's not to become a bendy pretzel in 30 minutes of yoga. The intention is to feel intention. And the intention is our movement and learning and being here. And that's great. So if you're trying to measure what you are doing and the success, the purpose, you're here. You are doing it. By simply being here and learning new techniques, you are aligning with this intention. You're doing it right. Oh, okay. This is so perfect. And I will say this over and over again. Often students ask, I'm not sure if I'm doing yoga or am I doing it right? Am I doing it right? This is a question I get a lot. Am I doing it right? And obviously you can't say, Hey, Mr. Hinkle, can you come over here and tell me if I'm doing it right? Because it's a recorded video. But I have a general rule that I would like to communicate and for you to understand. So if you are in a yoga posture or a yoga movement and you are breathing and it doesn't hurt, you are doing it right. Now, we might be able to refine and optimize, but it's not wrong. If you are in a yoga posture and you're holding your breath and you think you're about to snap something, I would say you're not doing it right. That's no danger zone. Let's stay in a place that feels good, that empowers ourself, that does not hurt. There is no gain with pain in our yoga practice, which goes against everything that we've ever thought about, right? Suck it up. No pain, no gain. Let's get it. If you're not hurting, you're not living. It's like, whoa, okay. I understand sometimes we have to go through things that are painful, but in the space that we're creating here, we don't have to harm ourselves. We can love ourselves and we can be super gentle and very nice to ourselves, not only in our body, but also in our brain. So, you are moving, breathing, and it doesn't hurt. You're doing it right. Our goal for this practice is to be in intention. Why we are here, we are here to move our bodies and feel good. That's it. Let's try this again, okay? Standing back to a cat-cow. So we're at the front of our mat. Hands sweep up, inhale. Little bend to knees, exhale, dive forward, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, bend your knees as much, fingertips down. You'll step your feet back, drop down to tabletop position. 
Knees under hips, hands under shoulders, fingers spread nice and wide. Inhale, arch your back. Exhale, round your back. Inhale, cow pose. Exhale, cat pose. Inhale, arch. Exhale, round. Very nice. Tabletop position. If you stepped with your right foot last time, step with your left. And if you stepped with your left foot last time, step with your right. Try and balance it out. Come to the front. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, forward folds. Inhale, little bend in knees. Come all the way up with your hands. Exhale, hands to center and hands down. Deep breath in here. Big sigh. Really good. Okay, I'm going to introduce a yoga posture, another yoga posture, into our flow as we go. Front of our mat, toe spread, hands sweep up, inhale. Exhale, little bend in knees, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands or fingertips down, step your feet back. Tabletop position. Very nice. Props to your left side. Perfect. From our tabletop, you can lean over left, step your right foot forward. Let me show you more. Lean over left, step your right foot forward. Very good. Grab your block. If this was a hard move for you, if this is your move, can stand up, grab your prop, set your right foot down, step your left foot back. Where we are going is right foot forward, left foot back. So again, here's options. Just so, and I'm being overly verbose in these er, uh, early classes. So we can step our right foot to our right hand and we're here. We can lean over to step, and then walk forward, and we've got our block. If we're in tabletop and we can't get it, we can stand up, grab some support, step our right foot forward and our left foot back, and then we're in. So lots of options. Where I want you to go is in this shape. Perfect. Now, we can bring our supports in, untuck your toes, Watch this move. And then scoot your left knee back. Untuck your toes. Scoot your left knee back. Whoa. You might say, oh, this hurts my left knee. And I would say, that's something that we can work with. Let's grab a blanket or some kind of cushion. So now what did I do? My right knee is over my right ankle. My left knee is behind my left hip. I'm going to bring the block or the chair back. And I'm going to start to straighten my right leg, flex right ankle. Now this is called half splits, Arda Hanumanasana. Hanumanasana is the name for full splits. Hanuman, there's a fun story. Hanuman tried to jump over the Indian Ocean, block out the sun. So we can get into some uh, mythology at another point. But if you're like, ooh, myths, I like that. Hanumanasana, Arda Hanumanasana, check it out. Okay, you're probably feeling some things in the backside of your right leg, and that is good. Is it painful or is it sensational? If you feel like something's going to break back off, if you feel a very deep stretch, breathe into it. The intention to be here, the intention to understand and understand understanding comes from awareness. <clears throat> Very nice. Okay, we can start to bring our right foot forward, scoot our left knee forward. However we need to go, let's go back into tabletop position. You might need to scoot your knees over. Perfect. Props go over to the right side now. And I'm going to show this one without props for those of us that are flexible. I've been giving a lot of demonstrations for 
low flexibility, but in order to be equal and fair, I also want to show flexibility. And I can only show as flexible as I am, so if you're more flexible than I am, um, it's a launching point. Perfect. Okay, tabletop position. Step your left foot forward. Hands are on either side of your left leg. <coughs> Excuse me. Now scoot your right knee back. Hands walk back. Left leg goes to straight. Left ankle flexed. Left leg towards straight. Hands underneath of shoulders. Chin slightly into chest. These are all alignment cues for half splits on our second side. Be here. <coughs> Let's take a deep breath in and a big sigh. Okay, we might have our hands on our block. We may need our hands on our chair. Same posture, same posture. This is important. This posture is the same as this posture, is the same as this posture. But we have varying levels of hamstring flexibility. So what one of you may be here having a certain experience. Whoa, I'm at my edge. This might not be a stretch. If I hang out here, I'm like, oh, uh, okay. But if I go here, it's like, oh, yeah, perfect. This is not better than this, and this is not better than this. One is not better than the other. These are both variations of your posture. The intention is for you to practice yoga in your body. Why are you here for you to do yoga? Not for you to do somebody else's yoga. So this is an important concept and it's really hard to connect to. Okay, hands walk forward, right knee walks forward, step back, tabletop position. Very nice. Inhale, arch, exhale, round. Inhale, arch. Exhale round. Very good. Okay, you can step, step. Move your prop around, halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Bend your knees, inhale, sweep your arms wide and up as they go. Exhale, hands to heart center and hands down. Tadasana, deep breath in. Big sigh. Very nice. Let's do this two more times. I'm gonna flow through these movements. First round with props. Second round, I will demo, demonstrate without props. Okay. <clears throat> so I've got my props here. I know my knees are sore. I've got a blanket set up. I know I, the ground is too far away from me right now, and I want a little bit of extra support, so I've got my props. Okay, great. And when we go into future videos, I'll give these options. I will not uh, be as lengthy in the description, but this is something that you start to attune. Oh, I know I like support here. I know I like support there. Perfect. Tadasana. Breath in and a breath out, inhale, hands go up, a little bend in knees, exhale, forward fold, inhale, halfway lift, exhale, fingertips to the ground, walk your feet back, knees find their blankets, perfect, props over to the left, step right foot forward or come up, Set your right foot down, and then left knee down. Good. Now scoot your left knee back. Bring your props back with you. And sometimes you got to move that prop around. And straighten your right leg. Right ankle flexed. Now here's the alignment cues. Right ankle flexed. Right leg towards straight. Do not straighten your leg if you cannot, right? So the cue is not straighten your right leg. It is Move your leg towards straight. Because if you can't straighten your leg, and I'm telling you to straighten your leg, then all of a sudden you think, ah, oh, I can't do it. But if I ask, please move your leg towards straight, then you think, I can do that, even if you can't straighten it very much. So this is the language that is 
nonviolent and accessible that I am working on developing and integrating into my practice. I don't always do a great job of it, but I want to. I want to. I want to be fair and inviting and accessible. It's something that I think about, and it's a practice, just like yoga, that I work on. How do I communicate to you in a way that does not offend, that invites you to do all the things that I'm requesting you to do? Okay, perfect. I got on a tangent again. I told you I would do that. Okay. Scoot your left knee forward. We'll go hands to props. Knees back. Tabletop position. Props move over to the other side. We'll shift weights. Good. Scoot right knee back so it's behind. So you can see left knee over left ankle, right knee behind right hip. And then we'll start to scoot back, hips back. Left leg moves towards straight, left ankle flexed. Hinge at your hips, relax your neck. Good, really good. Breathe. We were in the other side for a while while I was talking. So this side, think about your intention. Why are you here? To feel good, to practice yoga, to build strength, flexibility. There's so many beautiful reasons to be here. Okay, let's start to make our way forward. Right knee scoots forward, and then we'll step back. Tabletop position. We can adjust our props in front of us. Very nice. Let's go ahead and take a step forward, halfway lift, bend knees, forward fold. With a breath, inhale all the way up. And exhale, hands to heart center. And hands down. Really good. Okay, if you like the props, this is where I say continue to use the props, please. If you think, if you don't have anything, well, I hope you have a chair or a couch cushion or a coffee table. Really, it could be anything. But if you don't want to use them, maybe you try I'm not using them. See how it feels. You might learn that, oh, I actually do like the props, and that's totally cool. All right, front of our mats, toes spread wide, feet underneath of hips, shoulders relaxed. These are alignment cues for Tadasana. Inhale, hands go up. Little bend of knees, exhale, wide arm forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. You can go hands to shins. Exhale, bend your knees, plant your hands. Step back, tabletop position. Right foot steps to your right hand. Hands walk back, untuck left toes, take your left knee back. Move your right leg towards straight. Right ankle flexed, right leg towards straight. Hip square to the front, spine long. Relax your neck. So good. Breathe. Half splits, Ardha Hanumanasana. Hands walk forward, left knee goes forward. We can go right hand to the inside, back to a tabletop position. Shift weight, step your left foot forward. Right knee goes back, untuck toes, walk hands back, straighten your left leg. That's another cue, right? Straighten. Doesn't mean shove your left leg until it's straight, but straighten to whatever length that is. Flex left ankle, spine goes long, you're in it, breathe. Very nice. Hands walk forward, scoot right knee back forward, back into tabletop position. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Neutral, let's step forward, step, step. Hands to shins, halfway lift. Flat back, straight legs. Exhale, full forward fold. Inhale, little bend of knees, come all the way up. And exhale, hands to heart center, and hands down. Close your eyes, let's feel that yoga glow, that yoga buzz. It's like yelling into a canyon and hearing the echo of your voice 
those movements reverberate through our body and it feels good. Really nice. Blink your eyes open. Okay. You have a block or the corner of your chair. This one will be a little bit more awkward, but we could try. So feet are going to step out wide and then bend knees and squat down. In fact, chair aside, that's too awkward. So here's the first progression. Feet step wide, toes turn out, bend knees, forearms to our thighs. Now this is called malasana, malasana, yogi squat. And you can think about the deeper you go, the more your hips sit down. If you have a block, you can actually place your hips on it and sit on it. Now, your heart lifts up, your knees are opening wide, there's a lot of deep opening. We're in a squat position, which is really nice to help open up inner thighs. You can try without hips go down, arms to the inside. Now, this is much deeper than this, much deeper. And what you will find is if you are here through practicing these movements, this will open up for you. The squat is the thing that I see the most for individuals new to yoga is, uh, they, is students will come up to me and say, wow, I never thought I would be able to bend my knees the way that I do. And that's really cool. Okay, let's take this all the way down, hands down, seat to the ground. Straighten your legs, shake them out. <sighs> and what this can often look like too is timber. It's okay. We've got to have a little bit of fun with our yoga practice, right? Perfect. Okay, let's find a seat on our block or on our bolster as much as you need to, and we will cross our legs. <clears throat> let's all line this up. So feet out wide, pick up your right foot, right leg crosses in, pick up your left foot, cross your left leg in front of your right, hands by sides, lift up, feet are flexed, heart is lifted. Very nice. So this is called, believe it or not, easy pose. Sukhasana. Not easy for everyone. I understand because there was a point where this was sitting on the floor for me. I loathed sitting on the floor because it hurt so bad. It did not feel good. But over time, yoga has helped my body to transform and adapt. And over time, it can help you too. Now, if sitting on the ground does not feel good, sitting in a chair, can you bring one leg across and let this gentle opening, no knee pain here, but foot on thigh, left, left foot on right thigh, and left knee up, sitting back. Great. I am not going to promise any miracles, but I think this practice will lead to being able to sit on the floor at some point in the class. Perfect. Okay, <clears throat> we're here, we are seated. Let's sit nice and tall, inhale. Exhale. Ah, okay, so two things before we go there. That's right. Baby steps in these original classes. So <clears throat> if we're here cross-legged, a way that we can support this is hands behind to lift up. This is really, really good. Another way to support this is to sit back against the wall. Both really, really helpful, really, really supportive. Okay, cool. Lift up. If we're sitting okay, we have some flexibility in our hips, then with a flat back, we can lean forward and fingertips go in front. This starts to take it much deeper. If you're here though, right? Not gonna happen. Not today at least, and that's okay. That's not why we're here, to do things that we can't do. To get hard on ourselves for things that aren't in our practice yet, are here. Our intention is simply to be here, to ask ourselves why we are here, to understand that there is a reason why we are here. Perfect. Okay, let's take a deep breath in. 
and a big sigh out. Deep breath in. Big sigh. Inhale, let's come up. Hands go back. Step, step. Left leg in, right leg in. Sit up nice and tall. If you're in the round, hands by your sides. If you are on your chair, then help left foot down. Bring right foot up. <clears throat> right foot on top of our left thigh. It might be up here like this. Just as long as your right knee doesn't hurt, I'm totally good with it. And that is what I would really like to see is no knee pain, please. No pain, period. Sensation, yes. Stretching, yes. Feeling, yes. Pain like I'm about to break, please no. Okay, we've got a nice flat back wherever we are. Maybe you have folded forward. If you're really flexible, you might bring your forearms down. I know some people can bring their forehead down, but please don't just push for the sake of pushing. Find the nice sweet spot. I call it the Goldilocks syndrome. Not too cold, not too hot, but just right. And in yoga, it's not too deep, not far enough, but just right. Okay, we're in it. Deep breath in. And a big sigh. Very nice. Let's start to make our way back up. And then all the way onto our backs. So <clears throat> we can put props to the side. If you've got your chair, go ahead and make your way down. You can grab your knees and then use this as support to roll back on our backs. Let your feet drop down. Hands can go to your shins just below your knees. And then pull your knees in towards your shoulders. If you have space, you can reach up, clasp hands, grab a wrist, or forearms. All these things are good, but what I would like you to do is relax your hips, relax your spine, and just settle into this nice little compressed posture. Deep breath in. Big sigh. Really good. Release your feet down. Pick your hips up. Scoot them over to the right side. Take your arms out into a wide T and then bring your knees up and over towards your left elbow. Now, your right knee might be up in the air and that's okay if that's the case. You can support this putting a blanket between your thighs. That's a nice little adjustment. If your knees drop straight down, that's great. You can also place your left hand on top of your right knee. You can look straight up or if you want to twist through your neck, you can look through your right hand. This is a reclined twist. Go ahead, take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Bring your knees up, feet down. Pick your hips up, scoot them to center, and then pick them up again, scoot them to the left. Arms widen to T, knees pick up, drop them over to your right side. Excellent, very good. Right hand, you can place the blanket or bolster between your thighs. Right hand can go to your left knee. Twist open to the left, yeah. Be here please for a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Bring your knees back up. Set your feet down. Okay. So this is our final yoga posture. It's laying down on the ground. It's called Shavasana. And this might be the most important part of the entire practice because this is where all the benefits from everything we've done absorbs into our body. So please do not skip this ever. It's so important. And we will get into it. And I just want you to experience it. So 
we're laying down flat on our back, and you might need to have a little clothes adjustment. That's good. Your feet go as wide as your yoga mat and let your feet roll open. And then your arms are out by your sides and you can roll over to your right side, tuck your left shoulder blade in, roll over onto your left shoulder blade and tuck your right shoulder blade in. Palms are face up, pick up your head, tuck into your chin and then set your head back down. We are laying on our back with feet wide, with arms wide. This is our Shavasana pose. Now, adjustments, right? If you're in this posture and you think, ow, this hurts so bad, you are, are coming to yoga because you have back pain, then you can roll over to your side and lay in the fetal position. This is also a good way to take it down. This takes all the pressure off of your back, especially with your knees bent. And you're welcome to even grab a blanket now, remember, this is a modification. This is not the instruction for the alignment of the posture. The posture is on our back. But remember, no pain, please. So now you will stay down on your back, and I am going to get up and will sit and meditate while you are in Shavasana. And we'll be here for a few minutes. And this is beautiful. There is nowhere that you need to go, nothing that you need to do. In fact, please go ahead and close your eyes. A couple cues for relaxation. I like to lick my lips, swallow in my throat, relax teeth, and remove the tongue off the roof of my mouth. And then through nose or mouth, if your nose is blocked, draw a nice long breath of air in. And then when you let this breath go, feel it calm your entire body. And then we've got deep breathing in Shavasana, and I will be here with you while I meditate, and when it's time, I will call us all out of the posture, and then we will complete the day's yoga practice. Keep breathing, soften your face, let a breath roll through.
before you move a muscle, I just invite you, I invite you to check in. Notice how you feel in this moment. And this is what I want, what I request you reflect on. How good you feel right now. How do you feel? Calm, peaceful, easeful, excited, invigorated, energized, whatever it might be. Also recognize if you feel surprised or uncomfortable or anything, really. You being you is beautiful and please don't stop. And let's not oppress any feelings you may have. Let's empower ourselves to be truth, to be truthful. Okay, a slow movement out of Shavasana begins with movement in our hands, wiggling fingers and toes, and then we can start to roll through wrists. Reach your arms out and up, big full body stretch through your whole body stretch. There's usually a yogi yawn that's thrown in the mix there, I notice. And then you can roll over to your right or your left side, grab your blanket, or your bolster, your cushion, <clears throat> or your chair. Come back, join me in a seated position. Very nice. Very nice. Close your eyes, sit nice and tall. Let's bring our hands together right in front of our heart center. And we can bow into our intention of intention, why we are here. The fact that we are here, honoring that here we are on our yoga mat together, co-creating the space to practice yoga, to cultivate strength, balance, flexibility, to understand ourselves a little bit deeper and have a more positive outlook on who we are our world and our place in it. Thank you so much, everyone. All you beautiful people on the other side of the screen, I appreciate you for practicing yoga with me today. Bow into ourselves and each other. Namaste. Yes. <clears throat> okay. So good. Amazing. I'm very proud of you for working through in learning yoga today. And if today was a review, then, and you've done yoga before, then that's great because I hope that you found some insights in found fundamentals, in foundations. I love to go back to books about topics I already know and read the most basic, basic thing about it because what I find in there are little nuggets of wisdom where it was like, how did I miss that? And if this is your very first time practicing yoga, congratulations, pat yourself on the back. Please drink lots of water. Please get good sleep tonight. Care for yourself, love yourself, and be proud for completing your first yoga class. That's really cool. And that means you're off to a really good start. And I have a good feeling about the rest of the course for you and for us. So again, I just want to say thank you. I feel so grateful for all of you for being here. Keep up the good work, continue to practice, and take the lessons and the feelings here and let them overflow into the rest of your day. Let them translate into your actions, into your interactions, and Fill you up from the bottom of your heart to the top. Okay, thank you so much. Have a really nice day. I'll see you all next class. Namaste.